Okay. Now this data is the good stuff. James Cromwell, Zephram Cochran, Star Trek First Contact. All right, so we have a new Lord of the Rings show. As a Lord of the Rings fan myself, I figure I would dress my Sunday best and give you my thoughts on the first two episodes anyway. That's what aired. I guess I'm going to start out with the nice. The show looks expensive. <laughs> Because that's, that's what they've been saying. They're like, this is the most expensive show ever made. Always gives me a chuckle when studios in Hollywood, it's like they want to break records no matter what the record is. Most expensive show ever made. Great. And if it doesn't work out, that would make you the dumbest studio ever made. Cheers. I mean, I hope it works out and I hope it doesn't suck forever. By forever, I mean, I'll get there. But it does. The show doesn't look like a TV show in the sense of budget i mean it definitely does look expensive is there an argument to be made of the fact that the lord of the rings trilogy wasn't the most expensive film at the time so you don't really need that to make a lord of the well, well yes but you know credit where credit's due they wanted it to be expensive and now it looks expensive all right but the problem is after two episodes and going through these two episodes that's two hours of entertainment and i was just bored no that does not mean slow burn slow burn to me which funny enough i feel like there's an actual textbook definition of slow burn if you want to look it up i don't care but slow burn to me is when a movie a show a story in general could be a book has the intrigue of the audience it's an intriguing story and the audience is going along with it because there is a hook there that they just want to see what happens next so the story is methodically taking its time but it's doing that on purpose but you feel that purpose you feel that intent and you're going through the story to hopefully some great payoff. Boring is what I experienced in the first two episodes of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Will it pick up? Well, it's quite possible. That's two hours where it didn't. Two hours into Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, were you locked in? I was. I actually just watched the extended editions like yesterday. So maybe it's that fresh in my mind where I'm like, this does not feel the same. And you have to know that. This, this is not Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings world. I've heard stories about how the showrunners and Amazon, they like ghosted Peter Jackson. I don't know, I wasn't there. I don't care, that's not the point of me saying this. Wait, also, it's been way too long since my last sip. But when watching Rings of Power, it's very clear this is not Peter Jackson's Tolkien world. It's not tied into the Peter Jackson stories. It's a completely different thing. Galadriel is a new Galadriel, not the Kate Blanchett Galadriel, but younger. Elrond is a new Elrond, not Hugo Weaving, but younger. Which I feel is important for people to know that because, you know, if you're going in here like, all right, yeah, it's those characters, but younger. Though, maybe they intended them to be the same characters. I'm just saying it's, it's better if you just don't see it that way. Because at no point was I like, that's young Galadriel for sure. In fact, starting off, they made her character. I was like, what did you just do to her character? She's on the hunt with a few elves under her command. They're going to where they want to find Sauron. Then there was this ice troll and they were like, ice troll. The ice troll just throws this big old rock, flattens a couple of them. You're like, whoa, so they've sounded the alarm. This is a big deal. This is a very... Oh, Galadriel just took care of it in two seconds. She does a thing where she like slashes, slashes and doesn't even look at it. Took the entire fellowship, everything. Frodo almost died because that spear would have skewered a wild boar. Granted, that was a cave troll. This is an ice troll. Guess they're different. I guess ice trolls are the one that someone can just clobber and take down in two seconds without even barely looking at it or even acknowledging after the thing flattened a couple of her friends. Moments like that, I know Hollywood's like, ooh, how empowering. It's not though, in terms of storytelling, it just... It seems weak. It just seems like you're dealing with a character that's unrelatable because any of us would be sweating balls like, oh my gosh, I don't want to take this thing on, but I have to. But this character just Kryptonians herself through it. It just takes it out. It's like, oh, okay. So I can't really, we can't bond through this experience because I'm nothing like you. Taking on a challenge while being afraid is the only time someone can ever truly be brave. She had about the same look on her face that I have had when I've sprayed raid onto ants. It just kind of, Oh yeah, indifference. So now that the show's made you not root for Galadriel, what other characters we got? Well, you got new elf characters you don't really care about. You have new halfling characters you don't really care about. Of all the characters, Elrond is clearly the best of the characters in this show. I was intrigued with his scenes. Maybe I was I just liked seeing Kaz Doom because he went to Moria and uh, in Lord of the Rings Online. That was my MMO. Clocked in many hours at home, at work. Sorry, former boss who probably watches my videos. I used to play it in the projection booth. Yeah, why not? See, I was intrigued. I've heard they made Elrond gay. Is there some tension between him and another male character? I suppose. I mean, more than Frodo and Sam? 
No. Just in watching the show, I was met with that feeling of why didn't they do something straight out of the Silmarillion? I heard, I haven't looked into this. There's been a lot of chatter about this show that I haven't looked into. I was like, I'll just have the entertainment speak to me the way it speaks to me. But I've heard that there were some rights limitations to what they could use. They couldn't use things from the Lord of the Rings movie, which is fine. There are other stories out there. There are all these Tolkien stories that they could tell. But they took some of the stories from some vague appendices that gives them the wiggle room to kind of go their own way with it. Which I, I just, I don't think anyone was asking for that. I know that because when The Hobbit came out, like through The Hobbit's run in theaters, the entire trilogy, people were like, oh, you're gonna do The Silmarillion next? Pete Jackson, are you gonna, you should. Granted, wait a minute. Hold on. This is the Silmarillion. Translating this into any series, movie, or anything would be a pain in the ass because sometimes the events are kind of vague where it just kind of talks about what happened rather than the specific details. But there are some great stories, some great Tolkien history in here that I really think fans would want to see. Stories of Morgoth, of Sauron. I mean, granted, the Rings of Power in the Third Age is a chapter in here. Um, and it looks like the Rings of Power, in name, is trying to be a version of that, but not really. It's just such a rich world, begging for translation. I think a TV show lends itself to something like The Silmarillion, or at least a chapter of The Silmarillion. Because in my experience, part of the fun of something like this is seeing the stories you know translated on screen. But with The Rings of Power, I don't really have that. I don't run into that feeling of, oh, these are those stories that I've so wanted to see on screen. Literally comes across as people being like, we can do Tolkien world better than Tolkien did. Even at the beginning of this show where it's like Morgoth, I was like, oh sweet, we're gonna finally, we don't. There's so much you can do with Morgoth. There's so many people out there, Lord of the Rings fans, who don't really know who Morgoth is. You just, why not show Morgoth? How about the Children of Hurin? I had watched that, are you kidding me? I got that book from my friend, huge Tolkien fan. I was like, hey, happy birthday. New Lord of the Rings book, enjoyed. He read it and he was like, that was a downer. Now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, awesome. Why don't they do that? I'd watch a show revolving around that, dude. I guess the point of this is the fact that we're dealing with Tolkien's world. There are literary scholars out there who dedicate their entire careers and lives to the world of Middle Earth, to the world of Tolkien. Not only that, but J.R.R. Tolkien and his books, his world have inspired other authors to write their stories. Without Lord of the Rings, there would be no Game of Thrones. I just feel like a world like that deserves the respect that comes from a proper translation. At least make Galadriel the star of your show a character I can root for. You know, the little thing. Also, side note, is that Gandalf? <laughs> is he? He comes out of the sky in the form of a comet, lands, has no memory whatsoever. I was like, oh, I know this story. The answer is simple. Reunite him with his sword and he will remember that he is the angel Tyrael. Because this is Tyrael's arc in Diablo 3. I've seen this story before. But I do ask whether or not it's Gandalf. It's one of those things where you, you ever have something or situation, maybe it's a movie, but you think to yourself, Hey, if this twist happens, it would at least make it a little cooler. Right, so I feel like the only move that this show has to really pick it up is a cool reveal that no one sees coming and in which I'd be like, I guess that wouldn't be Gandalf, that would be Sauron maybe. I know we're supposed to think that Eminem meth Sauron is somehow Sauron in a world where Sauron can take many forms and he can take the form of someone trusting what he took that form. Dude, if this dude came to me anywhere was like, hey, you want these rings? I'd be like, no, no, I don't. But you have a good one. Obviously you've you've done all the rings. That looks like a dude behind a 7-Eleven selling broken, counterfeit, otherwise shady merchandise saying, no, it's legit, trust me. Granted, that dude looks like the dude by the dude behind the 7-Eleven being like, no, his stuff is shit. You should buy my, right. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying one's better than the other. Actually, it kind of looks like It is what it is. Hey, looks like me tomorrow morning, what of it? I mean, could be Radagast the Brown, could be one of the other wizards we haven't seen, but the implication seems to be, oh no, it's totally Gandalf. Though no one's called him Gandalf or Oloran, no one's ever actually addressed him and he hasn't 
actually said his name. I feel like it could be a case of the show breaking the fourth wall, being like, well, what does the audience consider trustworthy and a trusting figure? Oh, it would be Gandalf. I don't know, maybe my brain is doing that thing where it's like, okay, here's how we could make the show a little more interesting, because right now it's not. So Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, does it have that which I loved about Lord of the Rings? Not really. It has far too many characters they're spending the currency that is that precious build-up time, you know, that set-up time with. And they're generally characters I don't care about. After two hours of entertainment, if a show doesn't have me care about the characters, well, that's a problem. I will say this, this does run into that possibility, much like how the Disney Star Wars movies made people like me appreciate the prequels more. This Lord of the Rings show might actually get people to appreciate The Hobbit more. So hey, keep an eye out for that as pendulums swing. Am I gonna do videos on every episode? I, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I just don't care to. Story time, are you ready before we leave? The Lord of the Rings movies are actually fundamental among the orbit of my friends and I. Young projectionist working at the movie theater that I was, the teaser trailer for the Lord of the Rings trilogy came out about a year before Fellowship of the Ring did. Some coworkers and I were near concessions and we were talking about the trailer and I said the phrase, and I will quote myself, yeah, Magneto plays some wizard in this movie. And this concessionist dropped everything he was doing. He goes, some wizard? No, the wizard. That concessionist was named Adam and we remain friends to this day. I was the best man at his wedding. If my friends and I are planets in a solar system, the Lord of the Rings movies are definitely the sun. Oh, oh before we go. Ah, this was good. But yeah, as a Lord of the Rings fan, which Lord of the Rings means that much to me, having me feel indifferent throughout and to the end of the first two episodes of your Lord of the Rings show, not good. So I don't know if I care to do videos on every episode of this Lord of the Rings show. I'm enjoying House of the Dragon. I'd rather do videos on something I enjoy watching. All right, so Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Have you seen the first two episodes? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.